welcome back to my channel. It is time for another Topic Tuesday, and I am so excited. The topic for this week is most sentimental polishes or like your sentimental polishes, which I feel like is very apropos for Valentine's Day week. Today we're gonna get super chatty. We're gonna get very sentimental about some of my most prized possessioned uh, polishes based on like history and polishes that I will probably never get rid of because there's too much sentimental connection with these polishes and they just mean a lot to me. Now the first two that I have to share with you are the polishes that started the gigantic nail polish collection that you see behind me. Now I have always had nail polish growing up as a kid. Um, I remember having like a shoebox size Tupperware full of nail polish. There was like a wet and wild like blue polish in particular that, that I remember very very vividly. So I've always had nail polish but this particular collection has been an ongoing endeavor since my years in college and it started with these two wet n wild mega shines or wild shines whatever they're called this is lavender cream and red red I picked these up my sophomore year of college it was the first year that I was genuinely all by myself because my freshman year of college I lived at home with my family sophomore year my dad got a job in Colorado and they moved away but I stayed in Madison to continue my education and I was having a really rough day because I was sad that my family was gone so I decided to have a, a spa night. I got myself a DiGiorno oven pizza and I got myself a DiGiorno oven pizza and these polishes for a little manicure night. They're nothing to write home about. They're nothing special. There's nothing magical about these polishes. They're your very generic wet and wild creams but yet there's just so much memory packed in these little teeny tiny bottles and I just I love these polishes I will never get rid of them there's just too much history between the two of us and also knowing that like these were the ones that started this gigantic collection behind me are they make that means that they're very very special to me and in my little nail polish loving heart the next polish that is very sentimental to me is my very first non drugstore polish this is from the China Glaze Hunger Games collection that came out in what like 2009 2010 10 or something 11 it might have been 2011 because I think I bought this around the time my son was born and he was born in 2011 so I want to say this is around 2011 and um, this is stone cold after I had Milo I had postpartum depression pretty bad and with my postpartum depression I had insomnia like I couldn't sleep it was really not fun so in one of these nights when I was having trouble sleeping I was surfing the internet and I came across this nail polish blog or it was Pinterest perhaps where I saw a swatch of this polish and it just just mesmerized me because it is a matte polish. Up until that point I had never seen anything like this out in the world but I was very very new to the nail polish world so that might be understandable but this polish just stuck out to me because it looked like the road it looked like asphalt but it was like matte and that was so enticing and intriguing to me that I bought this polish immediately. I think it's definitely out the door with this one because it is getting it a little bit dried out. I've put restorative in it many, many times. Um, it's holding it in, it's holding on in there, but it doesn't have much longer. But even when it does go completely, I probably won't get rid of it because it is kind of an artifact for me. And I definitely want to hold on to it just for sentimental reasons. Next, I have my first indie polish. Now, I loved watching Karina Kaboom when she used to do nail polish videos. Now her channel has kind of gone in a different direction, but when I started watching her, she was doing nail polish reviews, and I loved them because they were quick, they were straightforward. I kind of also loved her, like, very, like, New York attitude about nail polish, and I just, I really enjoyed her nail polish reviews. She was the first person that turned me on to Caloris de Carol. I had never heard of Caloris de Carol before watching Karina Kaboom, and um, due to her reviews and her constant mentioning of Colorist to Carol, I picked up the Neon Glam, I think, or 80s Glam, 80s Glam. I think it was 80s Glam. Fell immediately in love with it because, again, I hadn't seen anything like this before with these like matte glitters in a clear base and they were just so fun and very like nostalgic for me in general because it was very 80s inspired and I just loved it. So I bought the entire collection. I did review it. It's like one of my earliest nail polish reviews. Um, I'm sure if you hunt around you could probably find it uh, but I love this and so this polish or like this collection I believe 
was some of the was one of the first purchases I made from Caloris to Carol, but there might have been an earlier purchase before that. Um, but the 80s glam was the first collection, full collection that I bought from Caloris to Carol. And again, very sentimental place in my heart. I love these matte glitters. If I'm ever like jonesing for a matte glitter, I always reach for these matte glitters from Caloris to Carol, and I love them. I love them very much. I, the next two polishes that I have to talk about are two that I've definitely talked about before from D Stash videos to favorites to like polishes that make me happy perhaps. I know I've talked about these quite a bit. These are two indie polishes that I received from Hannah Eve Nails It. We both have birthdays in September and so one year we decided to do a birthday gift exchange. I got her some stuff, she got me some stuff, and in her package she gave me these two indies. This first one is Candy Lacquer's Unicorn Bubbles and the other one is Cupcake Polish's Foley Berger. Now Unicorn Bubbles is one of Hannah's like ultimate favorite glitter toppers. She talks about this polish polish all the time on her channel. It's like her all-time favorite glitter topper. When I look at this polish, I think of Hannah. It makes me think of her so much because it's basically what I associate with Hannah in regards to nail polish. It makes me smile. It makes me think of Hannah. I absolutely adore it. And then Foley Berger from Cupcake is just... Stunning. Stunning. This is one of my all-time favorite pink polishes. I've many on many occasions I've described this polish as me in a bottle because it is this in-your-face hot pink. It's like one of the classic quintessential high glitz, high glam polishes from Cupcake Polish. It's magnificent. I love this polish so much, not only because it's adorable and it's so incredibly cute, but it was also a gift from Hannah, making it so much more sentimental and so much more special to me, and I love it so much. Very much. Next, we have these three neons. These are from the brand California Colors, and I talked about these in my current like miscellaneous D stashes. I picked these up on our family vacation in Hawaii. Chaz's mother's side of the family is Hawaiian, and so she has family that lives in Hawaii, and so one year I just decided Milo and I were going to go meet that side of the family because I hadn't met them yet, they hadn't met Milo yet, and we thought, oh, let's go to Hawaii, it'll be great. Chaz was unable to go with us, so I went with Chaz's sister, and the three of us set off for Hawaii, and it was horrible. <laughs> the flight to Hawaii was very traumatic because Milo, who was like three years old at the time, got sick on the plane. At that age, when Milo would get sick, like with a cold or anything like that, he would just automatically throw up. Like, you knew he had a cold, you could hear it coming, you could feel the cough coming to him, you could hear his nose starting to like stuff up, and within 12 hours he's throwing up. And that's exactly what happened on the plane. <laughs> he got sick hours before we were supposed to leave, and on the flight to Hawaii he was fussy, he was throwing up, he also had asthma a lot when he was when he was younger, especially when he had colds. So we had to use like his uh, nebulizer and his inhaler to keep him breathing. It was awful. It was probably one of the most traumatic plane rides ever. So when we arrived to Hawaii, it was just like, I don't understand why I'm here. What are we doing? Let's go home. And it took Milo a couple of days to adjust. He had never been away from our house before for an extended period of time like that. He was ill on top of it and he missed daddy. So it was a very traumatic experience. And since it's very clear to me now that I use nail polish as a coping mechanism, especially when I'm stressed out, I went shopping. <laughs> I went to the drugstore and I found these three neons. There's nothing exciting about them. They don't even have names. They just have numbers. I just picked them up because I saw them. They were very really inexpensive and I thought, you know what? I need to do my nails. This trip started out very roughly and I just need to relax and zen and do my nails. <laughs> so I bought these. They're not that great. You have to use white base coats with these two. The green one actually can get pretty good on its own. You have to do like two or three coats, but it's not bad. Um, and again, there's nothing special about these, but there's just so much backstory involved with them. Even though the backstory is very traumatic and very stressful, the rest of the Hawaii trip, once Milo got better and adjusted to being away from home, the trip was fantastic. And so these polishes kind of commemorate the Hawaii trip in a terrible light, but also a very happy light because it ended up being a great vacation for me and my son. Okay, and now the last polishes I have to share with you. Mark 
the beginning of an era for me and my channel. These are the first square hues that I received. And if you've been on my channel for a while or if you've like been checking out my past videos lately, you will notice that I used to do quite a few of square hue unboxings. It was a nail polish subscription service that no longer is working anymore. I mean, they still sell nail polish, but they don't do their subscription boxes. And when you first signed up for square hue, you would always get an extra box for free of like a past collection. So I have the July box of 2014 and the May box of 2014. So the theme for the entire year was the passport collection, so each box was a different like location. I believe July was Spain and May was, I'm gonna say Brazil because there's names of like Copacabana, Impanima, and Leblon, and I wanna say that might be Brazil, but I don't really know. So these were the very first square hues that I received. Um, I purchased this box and then they gave me this one for free. And the reason square hue is so sentimental to me is because square hue was the first brand that gave me free products for review, which I feel like is a huge accomplishment for a YouTube channel to start to receive products for review because they trust your opinions, they trust your review, and Square Hue was the very first one to give me products for review, which was so incredibly amazing and sweet and would not have been possible without the support of you guys. And it's just really fantastic to me. So th these are kind of bittersweet to me because it was the start, it was the very first like relationship with the brand that I really, really cherished and I worked really hard for. Um, and But it's also bitter because they don't make subscription boxes anymore. Um, and they don't really make new nail polish anymore. So it's a little bit like sad because it's like, oh, we had such a great time, but now it's not gonna happen anymore. Um, but it's still fun. It's still really fun. I still really love some of the square hue bottles that I have. Sometimes I flip flop. I go back and forth thinking like, yeah, I'm gonna de-stash it. And then other times I'm like, no, I can't. They're my babies. Like I can't do it. So only time will tell what will happen with square hue. But that is it. Those are my most sentimental polishes. I tried to keep this video a little bit shorter than last week. I felt like last week I got a little long-winded talking about polishes, but it just, it's so fun. Fun. So I hope you guys don't mind that I kept this video a little bit more relaxed. Um, I didn't do live swatches because once again, I just, I really want to keep these super easy for me to edit and fun and light. So I hope you guys don't mind that I didn't do live swatches. I was able to find swatch sticks of almost all of these polishes, so I hope that's okay. Um, but I just really wanted to keep this casual. So if you want to participate in the hashtag Topic Tuesday, please do so. I know a lot of people on Instagram participate and I know there's definitely people who participate here on YouTube. So the best way to find people who are doing Topic Tuesday, or if you want people to find you if you do Topic Tuesday, is to use the hashtag Topic Tuesday. I will leave a link to the um, Topic Tuesday Instagram down below because that's where Jody posts all of the topics for the month. Um, and that's also where you can vote on topics and where you can suggest topics for the upcoming months. So if you're interested in, in um, participating in Topic Tuesday, definitely check out that. Instagram. That is going to be my video for today. Just a super casual laid back let's chit chat about polishes. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you are new. I will be doing some nail polish reviews coming up. I've got some indies. I've got some mainstream. It's gonna be good. And we all know Polish Pickup is coming at the end of this month and I will be doing another Polish Pickup preview which I'm super pumped and so excited about. So Definitely stick around. There's gonna be a lot of fun reviews coming the rest of this month. We're gonna be doing more Topic Tuesdays every Tuesday as well, so you'll definitely want to hang out. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna let you guys go, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!